So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn your scrap wood into sanding blocks. Now, before we do that, I want to give a shout out to Cerritos College. Um, this is one of the projects that we uh, make in the Intro 101 class. And I heard recently that they changed the class up a little bit and they no longer make sanding blocks. So, uh, which is too bad because this is really handy around the shop. So if you live in the Southern California area, you really owe it to yourself to go check them out. They have a really awesome woodworking program. So the first thing we need to do is to mill our stock to size. We're gonna take them down to three quarters of an inch thick by three and a quarter inch in width and five and a half inches in, in length. Now this will fit half a sheet. And if you want to fit a whole sheet, then cut them to 11 inches long. This is the size that they make at the college. I find it a little bit too big for everyday use, but could be handy when you're sanding big projects. So I have my pieces milled to three quarter inch thick. Now I'm gonna show you a little tip uh, how I cut them to size. I'm gonna turn you guys a little bit more anal. You might lose a few friends, but hey, your work's gonna look a little bit cleaner. So the first thing I do, instead of ripping them right to three and a quarter, I'm gonna set it a little bit bigger, maybe a three and a quarter plus a sixteenth. I'm gonna rip them and then I'm gonna cross cut them because every time I cross cut, there's a little bit of fuzz, then I'm gonna come back and then I'll remove that. Now we're going to set the fence to three and a quarter and trim off the fuzzes. Now it's nice and clean all the way around. So I'm going to be cutting my grooves on the table saw. I got my flat top tooth blade in there, so I'm going to run it through twice. I'm going to go once this way and then I'm going to flip it 180 and then run it through again. This way my groove will be dead on center. So it's very important that all your stock will be exactly the same thickness. So if you're going to be running through the planer, hopefully all of them run through at the same time. So my blade is set to approximately 5 eighths of an inch in height. I also marked out a quarter of an inch in my blocks. That's where my groove is going to be. Now when I set up, I notice that a lot of people when they set up they like to set the fence or the blade to this side of the line. Now I don't like to do that. The reason why is because when I'm cutting and for any reason I come off the fence, I will be making my groove a little bit bigger. Now it's okay as woodworkers to fix problems or learn how to fix problems, but I think it's just as important as to prevent problems. So I'm gonna set my fence or the blade on this side of the line because when I'm cutting, and if it comes off the fence a little bit, well, I'm cutting on my waist side. Now I can run this thing through a hundred times and I would have a hundred chances of getting it better and better and consistent in my width. If I have my blade on this side of my line, if I run it through a hundred times, I have a hundred chances of messing it up. Now I want my groove to be very consistent because when I cut my wedges, I want all my wedges to fit in every single one of my, my blocks. It's time to glue the blocks with cork. Now I'm using 8 inch cork. I got these online. It usually come one foot by three feet. Um, two sheets of this will take care of 20 half size sanding blocks. Now I have my spacers ready. 
It makes it easy when I'm setting in the blocks. I cut them to about a little under 5 16th. Now I'll be using contact cement by 3M. I've tried a lot of different brands and 3M works the best by far. You can get them in the bottle or in a spray can. Um, for a big job like this, I prefer rolling it on. It's less messy than spraying all over the place. Especially when the, with the blocks, I want it only on the surface and not on the edges. Now 3M also make a spray adhesive. It's a great product, but, but not for this. Because cork is um, porous, contact cement works the best. Like when you're sanding, now it builds up heat. You don't want the cork to delaminate. Now because this is water-based, I wet down my roller and I kind of dried it off really fast. I also have my gloves. I always like to protect my hands because you never know when I get another call to do some hand modeling job. You gotta be really generous with this. And I'm gonna separate them before it gets stuck together. like that. And I'm going to touch up each one. Okay, so now that it's dry, I'm going to start applying these onto the cork. I'm going to start off maybe like an eighth of an inch away from here. Set down. This will help me guide it. So now I'm going to put a backing board on here and I'm going to take my knife and just cut them all apart. Now I would never take my knife and go right up to the edge and try to cut it clean because cork is so brittle that no matter how sharp your knife is, it always leaves a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a, see here, it's not much, but again, I'm just being anal and I don't have too many friends. So I'm just going to barely touch it because I'm not going to worry about any kind of glue that's left over on the edge here. Because when I put the other side on, then I'll take care of everything all at once. Okay, now that we have everything sanded, we're just going to repeat what we did the first time. 
I'm going to lay all these out. Now that I have cork on both sides, I am going to have a real light touch and remove some of the glue. This one's okay. A little bit of glue here. Right here. There you go. That doesn't take much. Now the next step is to cut our wedges to fit in our groove. So I want to take a couple, few measurements. So this one here, four, two and a half. So two, forty, two and a half. This one's 43. This one's 44. This one's 43. So it's pretty darn close. Okay, I'm only about thousands of minutes away. So my target is going to be two, four, three. Now to make my wedges, I have my stop milled up to three quarters of an inch thick. Because my groove is only five eighths, so it will be sticking up about an eighth of an inch. I also want my wedges to fit into my groove at a three degree on each side. So it's coming, coming in this way. I like to use the longer board because it would fit two. And also if you're making the full size, it would also accommodate for that too. I like to use a, a longer board because it's safer than trying to cut tiny little wedges this short through a table saw. So now the first thing I would do is I would change my angle to three degrees. Now I'm going to make my first cut. So I want to mark out where I want to cut. So I have my three degree tapering down this way. And I want to taper it down this way. And then the bottom of the groove would be five eighths from here to here. So I have my square set to five eighths. I'm going to make a little line here first. So from here, it has to be a quarter of an inch. So I set my ruler on here. So a quarter of an inch would be right about here. I get this set at three degrees and I'm going to draw my line approximately right here. Now I don't know if you can see that but I put my blade right on the line kind of leaving the pencil line a little bit and then I can always sneak it in later. Well let's make the first cut and see how it goes. Okay, so a little bit too tight. So it's uh, still a little bit too high. I need to lower it about a quarter of an inch, so maybe I'll go tap it over a 64th of an inch and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna tap it over that. And so now I'm gonna have to go flip it over so the angle is this way. Just a hair more. That should do it. Take this guy, flip it over. Too loose, so bring it back just a hair. that. Oh, 
that's perfect. This is what I want. Now this is pretty much what I want. It just barely hits the bottom and it doesn't fall out. Nice and snug like this. Now I'm just going to cut the rest of them. So the last thing is to cut them in length. Now I'm going to cut them to six and a half inches. You can uh, cut them any length you want. Now you can sand the wedge a little bit, give it a little bit of personality. Put this right up to this line here, bend it. This. And wedge. There you go. So I went ahead and made some sanding blocks that can sand concave parts. It comes in really handy. It's a lot better than trying to put some sandpaper around your finger and go in there and trying to sand those parts. So um, if you want, let me show you how to make these. So the thickness of these material is really determined by the tooling that you have. So I have an eighth inch round over. So my thickness is a quarter of an inch. And then this one's 3 16, so this is 3 8. Then I have a quarter inch round over, so this is half inch. And then I have 5 16, which is 5 8. And then 3 8, that would give me 3 quarters. And then I have a 7 16 inch bit, and then this will be 7 8. And it can just go on. First, I want to thank all the people who supported my channel by going to my website and purchasing my online class of the coffee table. It really helps with the cost of this studio. I sincerely appreciate that. I want to put out more videos on YouTube, but I do have bills to pay. So if you want to support my channel, at least hit the like button and subscribe. I know this is a simple project video, but I still hope you got something out of it. So take care and I'll see you in the next video.